Hello. Today we're going to focus on exchange, specifically how to find our contract curve. To look at our contract curve, what we're doing is overlaying two sets of indifference curves over each other. The first set of indifference curves goes upward and is curved like so. And the second goes downward and has been flipped like so. And so these don't necessarily have to be Cobb-Douglas type. We can do this with anything from perfect substitutes, perfect complements, et cetera. But in this case, and the case that we're going over today, we're looking at specifically Cobb-Douglas type. So with Cobb-Douglas, what we're doing is overlaying these two sets of indifference curves. And what we're trying to do is figure out the points or the line of points where these intersect. Right? So there's going to be one point for each of these sets of indifference curves where they intersect. This is our contract curve, which is optimal for both members involved. Right, So it's the optimal layout of who gets what in terms of amounts of good X and amounts of good Y for both consumers. And so the reason that we're doing this is to try to figure out what's optimal for society, not just for one of the two consumers. And to figure this out, each point along these curves shares one thing in common, which is that our slope is the same for both consumer A and consumer B at each of these points. So mathematically, we can use that to our advantage. We can say, OK, I know the slope is the same at each of these purple points. I know that I'm trying to construct the line of purple points. So what I'm trying to say is my slope will be the same at each of the points along that purple line. And we know from 10A, when we're trying to maximize and we're trying to figure out the slope of an indifference curve, all that is is our MRS. Right? Our MRS is our slope at a given point. And that's each of these points along these line. That's going to be our slope at that point. Right? It's the marginal rate of substitution for that specific point. And that's going to be true for both the consumer A and the consumer B's preferences. So from there, what I'm going to do is say, OK, I know the slopes are the same. I also know that if I take this and I say MRS A, that's going to be equal to MRS B. Right? If, if these two slopes are the same at this point, then this also holds. MRS A is equal to MRS B. So from there, I'm going to start with my MRS A. So what I have to do is figure out what is MRS A. Okay. And remember, again, our MRS is the partial derivative of our utility function, in this case of person A with respect to xA, or our first good. And then we're going to put that over the partial derivative of, again, utility A with respect to our second good, or yA. Right? So we're just taking this utility function right here, and we're putting the partial derivative with respect to xA over the partial derivative with respect to yA. So our partial derivative with respect to xA of this utility curve is just going to be yA. And the same opposite is true here. So the utility of A partial derivative with respect to YA would be XA. So that's my MRS here is YA over XA. And then we can do the same thing for MRS B. So MRS B is going to be the utility of person B, the derivative of that with respect to first XB. And then we're going to put that over the derivative of utility B with respect to YB. So again, I'm just looking at this utility function here instead. 
happens to be mirrored, happens to be the same in this case, doesn't always have to be the case though. And so that's going to be yb over xb. Okay, with that in mind, I can take these two and I can set them equal to each other. So I can say yA over xA equals yB over xB. Okay, so that's a solid start. But we have four variables here, and that's not enough to exactly figure out what our next move is when we're trying to find the equation for the contract curve. So our next step involves these next few sentences. The first says that person A starts with 30 units of X and zero units of good Y, and person B starts with zero units of X and 10 units of Y. Okay, so these are our, what we call our endowments. Okay, so I'm gonna write an aside here. These are our endowments. And so let's start with good X. So that means XA plus XB, when we add up the amount of all good X in this market, there should be 30 units of X and zero units of Y for person A, zero units of X and 10 units of Y for person B. So total, there's 30 units to kind of distribute here for good X. And then for good y, we're going to do ya plus yb equals 10, right? So person A has 0, person B has 10 units. So total, there's 10 units to distribute of good y. And so we're kind of looking for trades that get us to more optimal places on this contract curve. So with that in mind, we can go back to our math and we can say, okay, ya over xa. Let's keep everything in terms of ya and xa. But what we can do instead is say equals, what's an equation for yb, right? yb is really equal to 10 minus ya, right? So we can just rearrange this and we can say yb is equal to 10 minus ya. So I can plug in 10 minus ya on the top here. Same for x. I can say xb equals 30 minus xa. I can plug that in down here. I can say 30 minus xa is my equivalent to xb here. So now we only have two variables. That's a lot easier to work with. From there, I'm going to multiply. I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to say, I'm going to take this, I'm going to multiply over here, and then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to multiply over here, okay? And what we're left with after that process is YA times 30 minus XA equals XA times 10 minus YA, okay? So this looks kind of messy, but I assure you that once we kind of distribute everything out and we combine some like terms, it'll look a lot cleaner. So let's distribute out this YA first. 30YA minus XAYA. That's going to be our left side of the equation. I'm going to distribute out this XA. So I'm going to say 10XA minus XAYA. And so then I am left with something that looks a little better. And I can even go further and say, if I add x a y a to both sides, then these cancel out. So I'm left with 30 y a equals 10 x a. And then from there, I can divide by 10 on both sides. And I can say 3 y a equals x a. And that is my contract curve. So that's going to be option D, xa equals 3ya. And again, based off of the things available to us, right, the answer choices available to us, we're either in terms of ya or xa for these equations. So you just have to take a look because you could get one third xa equals ya, for instance, that's the same exact contract curve, right? All we have to do is multiply by three on both sides and then we're here. So either way, you can get to that answer. 
you just have to convert based on the answer choices available to you. So option D is correct here.